Jay the Youngin was a rapper from Louisiana who was tragically killed on July 27. He was only 24 and lived a wild life that was full of ups and downs. This is the true story of Jay the Youngin. On July 27, police in Jay's hometown of Bogalusa, Louisiana responded to a call of a shooting. When they pulled up to the scene, they found that one of the victims had already been rushed to a local hospital and another victim was still at the site of the shooting in critical condition. While they were trying to figure out what went down, another shooting happened nearby and police think they might be related. Later that night, the Bogalusa Police Department issued an update on Facebook confirming that Jada Youngin had been shot and killed and one of his family members was the second victim. Jay's dad is allegedly the second victim, but it ain't been confirmed yet. Luckily, his family member survived and is in stable condition, but Jay tragically passed away. Before his death was confirmed, a woman who's allegedly Jay's sister hopped on Twitter and said the rumors about him dying was false. She wrote, Shut up, y'all know what the f y'all talking about for real. Then, ain't nobody f dead, stop d eating and go read a book. She tops it all off by writing, I hate you internet freak Stop trying to confirm shit, y'all don't fucking know, bullshit asses. Apparently, Jay was still alive at the time, but unfortunately, things took a turn for the worse and he passed later that night. The mayor of Bogalusa, Wendy Perret, put out a statement asking for help from Jay's hood. She said, the senseless shooting in Bogalusa is another tragic reminder of the pain that violent crime brings with it. My thoughts and prayers are with the victim's family and friends. As your mayor and as a mother, I plead on behalf of our community and our children. Today, must mean enough is finally enough. Stop the violence. See something, say something. No one know who was behind the shooting yet, but investigators on the case say that the violence was retaliatory. Jay been in trouble with the law in the past, and he actually just got out of prison in June for possession of a firearm under indictment. Jay blew up in the late 2010s after racking up millions of plays on SoundCloud. His debut project, Roughway, dropped in early 2017 built him a buzz in the local scene. Then, his track Interstate went viral on YouTube and hit over 4 million views in under a month. By this point, Jay already had enough momentum to be considered for XXL's 2018 freshman list. He stayed on his grind and dropped three more tapes, The Real Jump Man's 23, Wake Up, and Taking Off. The track Elimination off of his 23 project ended up becoming his breakout single, racking up over 50 million plays on Spotify. His next project, Forever 23, pushed him even further into the spotlight and became his first mixtape to hit the Billboard 200 chart. By the end of 2019, Jay already dropped 10 mixtapes and was becoming one of the hottest new rappers in the South. But even though his career was popping off, he still had a foot in the streets and couldn't stay out of trouble. He ended up missing one of the biggest shows of his life after getting arrested in Florida. Jay was pulled over for speeding on May 11, 2019 by the Florida Highway Patrol. The cops said they smelled weed, so they searched his whip and found 20 grams of weed, paraphernalia, and pills. Plus, one of the other people in the car had a gun on him. Jay ended up getting arrested and hit with a felony possession of a controlled substance without a prescription. He was out on bail the next day, but still had to cancel a set at Rolling Loud. Then in 2020, Jay was arrested again after he allegedly assaulted his old girl. She called the police and claimed they had a fight. Then Jay grabbed her hair and started punching her over and over. She was pregnant with their first kid at the time, but Jay also allegedly choked her till she damn near passed out. The police went to his crib in Houston, Texas and raided the house. At first, they couldn't find Jay, but they did find 24 bands in cash, promethazine, oxycodone, and guns. Eventually, the cops found Jay hiding in his attic and booked him for assaulting a pregnant woman and illegal drug possession. Jay's ex later posted photos of her bruises on social media after getting into an argument with a rapper named Cuban Doll. His ex tagged Cuban Doll and said, this what I'm blackmailing them on? This what the little joke was about on live, with pics of her black eye and bruises on her neck and body. Even though Jay was arrested for assault, the two of them ended up getting back together pretty fast. Just a few weeks later, they both got arrested at an Airbnb in Georgia when cops found bottles of lean, pills, 11 guns, and over two bands of cash. They both got hit with narcotics possession, tampering with evidence, and possession of a weapon. But it ain't in there. Later that year, Jay got arrested for domestic violence again after he allegedly attacked his girlfriend. According to the police report, Jay punched, pushed, and grabbed her, which left visible marks and scars. The cops charged him with battery, family violence, and three felony fugitive from justice charges. Then, in August 2021, Jay got arrested for driving recklessly at a high speed with his passenger door open. When the cops pulled him over, they found a woman in the car with him and a baby on her lap without a seatbelt. They cited him for careless operation of a vehicle, no child restraint, and driving with a suspended license. This was a serious case. What happened a month later was way worse. On September 16, 2021, 
Jay got hit with accessory to second degree murder and obstruction of justice charges related to a deadly shooting that happened in 2020. Jay posted a video of himself getting arrested and captioned it with, I only want to change my city. Judgment of unreliable sources ain't right. I'm an artist, not a statistic. Rumors started flying about what the arrest was for, but eventually, more info was released about what went down. The murder happened at a birthday party in Louisiana for a woman named Big Ray. She hired some local club promoters to help bring in a crowd, and over 100 people showed up to the party on August 8, 2020. At around 8 p.m. that night, a group of dudes pulled out automatic weapons and started dumping shots into the crowd. Three people got hit during the shooting, and unfortunately, one of them died from their injuries. She was a 21-year-old from New York named Zion Hutchinson, who was staying in Baton Rouge at the time. A few days after the shooting, the police arrested a 30-year-old named Brandon Perry and a 23-year-old named Tommy Diamond for second-degree murder and two counts of attempted murder. Then, a dude named Craig Brown got booked too, but Brown wasn't a shooter. He was just a club promoter who they charged with possession of illegal drugs with intent to distribute, negligent homicide, and two counts of negligent injury. Even though he wasn't involved with the shooting, cops still thought he was responsible because he helped run the event. Then Big Ray was also arrested and charged with negligent homicide and negligent injury because the shooting happened at a party. Eventually, the cops tracked down two more alleged shooters in Texas and Montana. Then a year later, they connected Jay to the case. Since he was charged with accessory to second degree murder, the cops obviously didn't think Jay was one of the dudes shooting, but they might have thought he helped the shooters escape or get rid of evidence. Jay never spoke about what went down publicly, and we'll probably never know the full story of what happened that night. Another time Jay made headlines was back in 2019 when he got a chain snatch at a show in North Carolina. A video leaked online showing Jay getting into some kind of fight. Then later, another video is posted where an unknown dude holds an ATK chain, and someone yells out, Tell him come get this shit. Then the dude holding the chain says, F that n Jay the Youngin'. Jay wasn't an official member of ATK, but he was close with Young and Ace, and they had a collab project together, so Ace gave him a chain to show love. A few days after it went down, Jay hopped on Twitter and said, If you don't know facts about a situation, don't speak on that shit. And, I'm so solid, can't shit phase or break me. I'm built for this. Then, Young and Ace got involved and told the thieves they had one hour to give Chain his chain back. The dudes obviously knew Ace wasn't the one to play with. And not long after, Jay hopped on IG to show everyone he got his chain back. The next day, rumors started flying that the dude who took it got chips. A dude named Aaron Thomas was killed in his home in Greensboro, North Carolina, and Jay and some ATK affiliates started dissing him on social media, so it seemed like they was behind the hit. Later, one of Aaron's homies came out and said that Jay and the other dudes was lying for clout. According to him, Jay and Ace paid 25 racks to get the chain back, and Aaron's death wasn't related to the situation. He also FaceTimed the dude who took the chain to prove that ATK wasn't involved at all. Jay the Young had a lot of issues, but at the end of the day, he was a talented artist who never stopped working on his craft. He already dropped two EPs this year, and also planned on creating his own label to sign other artists who came from the streets like him. Unfortunately, he'll never be able to reach his full potential, but he left fans with a ton of music to carry on his legacy. There ain't too many details about our shooting available yet, but the story's still developing, so make sure y'all tap in for updates. Rest in peace to Jay the Youngin'.